Hawaii Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland. I hope you caught last week's show with my guest host from the Sierra Club, Jody Malinowski, talking about dealing with overcrowding and dangerous conditions on Oahu's hiking trails. If you didn't, search YouTube for Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii is my mainland. Our shows are also available as podcasts on iTunes. One of the issues I've been following is the Mauna Kea 30 meter telescope project. A few months ago, I interviewed attorney Euclid Aluli, who represented the Hawaiian Environmental Alliance, Kahea. That show is also on YouTube. This week, my guest is Ikaika Hasi, editor, editor in chief and publisher of both Summit Magazine and the Hawaiian Independent. But that's not enough for this father of three. He's also a board member of Kahea and a um, musician for an Afro band, which is the last time I see him. So he's going to help us navigate this week's decision by hearing officer Ricky May Amano in the case. Welcome, Ikaika. Thank you. I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so this is something that you as a board member of Kahea, uh, you want to just talk a little bit about what Kahea has been doing in this case and, and, and what this case means. Sure. So Kahea has been, an, I would say, an early um, uh, proponent of, of, of a more uh, holistic and a smarter approach to Mauna Kea, to the management of our mountain. Uh, but I just want to be clear that People have been talking about and been concerned about the development on Mauna Kea since the 1970s. Uh, community groups, environmental organizations have been raising concerns ever since the first batch of telescopes were being developed on the mountain. Um, and we also have we have we have laws. You know, we're 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 we live in a community that has actually the rule of law in theory, and those <laughs> laws prohibit this kind of development in a conservation zone. So. Uh, our job as Kahea has been, has been um, tr you know, holding the state accountable, holding these institutions accountable, um, and ensuring that our laws are upheld. Thank you for framing it that way. Um, there's a lot of people who, who like to um, split this baby um, around science, and um, it's, it's really not helpful. No, it's not. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Not. I know that Kahea has certainly been a heavy user of science in the case, and as a matter of fact, our background is from uh, the Hui Malama Mauna Kea report mm -hmm. on um, the aspects of Mauna Kea that have not been in c compliance over the years, as you said. And this, this, the graphic is around the the view planes that have been distorted by um, by the thirteen observatories that are there now. Right, right, right. Okay, so this week was a big deal. It was. Actually, I should say uh, it was the latest in a series of. <laughs> I, okay. I mean, I think it's important to always keep things in in context. Uh, it's very easy, I think, for people who are um, who are deeply concerned about the, the life and health of our of our mauna, for them to feel um, depressed or bummed out about the the decision. But you know, we've been here for thousands of years. We will continue to be here for thousands of years, and so this is just another day in 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 an existence which has its ups and downs. You know, there's that saying. It's in a wonderful Kikuhi kind of Hele song, Hilao um, Kapuu uh, Himano Kaihona, talking about how Hilo is full of of, of hilltops and ravines. You know, there's mm. ups and downs, and this is just a, a down. But uh, we have a long movement. We have a long uh, history here, and in a, in a, in an incredible future. So we were going to show a couple of the hats that you wear very briefly, um, just to put you in context. One is that you're a publisher of a magazine, yep. uh, of a physical magazine, Summit, yeah, which we're, is also going retro. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that it's unglossy. It's very hip, but it's unglossy. Thank you. Well done. Well, you know, glossy costs more. I'm just kidding. It doesn't. Have <laughs> no. So, all uh, right. And our magazine is sort of ironically, it's named Summit, and. A, f a friend of mine asked me when we launched the magazine a couple years ago, is this a magazine about Mauna Kea? And I said, no, no, no. <laughs> this is a magazine that actually, so the, the name comes from the motto of Queen Kapiolani, which is to strive for the summit, Kulia Ikanu'u. And it's, you know, she said that in a time when Hawaii was, in many ways, in its ascendancy. You know, we were, um, we had just recently 
become the most literate country on the planet. Yeah, 80%. Is, right. Woohoo! No, 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 not 80%, 100%. Uni we had universal literacy. Wow, okay, yeah. sorry. And no, that's fine. 80% is <laughs> a good number, too. I mean, the United States would love to be 80% as right? well. Right? Today. Yeah. No, but Hawaii would love to be 80% today. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I mean, we've really, we really, um, we've pretty, you know, gone pretty far down since our peaks in the 19th century. Uh, and part of what I, the reason I wanted to start this magazine was to kind of raise expectations for what we can think about ourselves. And um, I think part of what we're dealing with in this Mount Akita issue is proponents of the development of the telescopes on, on the mountain are saying that we need this telescope in order to, in order to um, bring science to our, to our Kiki, in order to um, elevate our economy and to bring more money into our community. And I think actually we need to start with just believing in ourselves. That's, that's a critical um, precursor to actual economic and scientific and political achievement. Uh, we need to have some love for ourselves as a people in this place. I think that that is one of the most beautiful things about this whole TMT issue. Um, I hope it doesn't get built as currently planned under the, the current conditions, but even if it does, um, and hopefully that will only be according to those 40 rules that have come down. Mm -hmm. um, what it has done for the Hawaiian community. Um, you sent me some beautiful pictures that I um, um, were taken um, of the protests and kind of embodies that, that what you were saying, you know, mm -hmm. that for the, maybe not for the first time, but in, in, in recent history. Right the amount of um, just great love and passion for um, the mountain and the culture have really come through mm -hmm. in this case. So yeah, it's a case about the Mauna Kea, but it's, yeah. it's I mean, more than that. Exactly. A lot of the photos that I think you might be showing on your screen were taken by um, a, a Maori pr a photographer who was visiting Hawaii during these protests. His name is Te Rafitiroa Bosch. Uh, and and he was there with, the, with a lot of our family and friends who were there on the mountain um, to, th you know, through several very tumultuous days, very important days, in which the state of Hawaii decided to bring a lot of, uh, of its Doe Care enforcement officers to, you know, to treat the defenders of the mountain as if they were there illegally. Um, and so you, we see Kaho Kahikonuha being arrested here in this photo. And, you know, I think that our state government made a very difficult, but ultimately the wrong decision in pursuing those arrests. Um, and I think in a lot of ways, what we have now with this decision by Judge Amano is it's putting, it's gonna put the ball back into a political court. You know, it's no longer, you know, it's been sort of taken out of this uh, kind of quasi judicial proceeding at the Board of Land and Natural Resources and put, in, put back into a political question. Uh, which is what ultimately is that, what is the political question? I would say that the the issue facing Governor Ige is, um, do we does he decide to to pursue development of TMT on Mauna Kea in spite of the tremendous opposition that it it has within the Native Hawaiian community, and it's a very difficult decision. And I empathize with his position because, you know, for decades, Native Hawaiians have been regarded and I would say sort of disregarded in terms of our role politically within our own, within our homeland. Um, we're the founding 20% of this community that we call Hawaii, but we're often sort of ignored and we're relegated to either homelessness or to being the posters um, for the tourist industry. Our language and culture has been used to make millions of dollars for other people, not for us. And so it's very conventional, I would say, to disregard Native Hawaiians and our knowledge and our history and our culture. Um, a courageous governor would not do that. He would actually say, you know, uh, it's actually in our best interest long term to listen to our, to listen to the democratic uh, voice coming out of these youth, out of the Opito. They're clearly saying that they don't want this. A smart, courageous governor would, uh, would listen to his people and not push this project through. 
Uh, and I'm hoping that that's what the governor decides to do. Um, he, he should also recognize that Native Hawaiians are the fastest growing ethnic group within Hawaii. And that ethnic group is going to, you know, those young kids are going to grow up and they're going to vote. And they're going to take jobs. They're going to take professorships. They're going to become doctors and, and lawyers. This is a, a group that has been here forever and is only going to get stronger. So um, disregarding those voices would be a mistake, I think, politically. So you, um, you brought up being, being professors. You yourself have been a, a professor. I just want to. No, 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 no. No? <laughs> I, I, I thought I read Adjunct faculty. You. Thank you very much. OK, OK. Yes. All right, all right. But you're, you're very well. Um, uh, you're a graduate of UH. I am. Yeah, yeah, proud. yeah. And um, so how do you see the role that UH has played in this? Ah, it's a good question. You know, it, it reminds me, um, several years ago, um, there was another, I, I guess it's the, the last telescope to be developed on Mauna Kea before TMT. Um, was that the Keck? Remember. Might have been Keck, possibly. I can't remember. Uh, but there was a, a, a major protest at the university. It was around the same time as um, the Rice v. Cayetano decision, and uh, I believe uh, Millie Lenny Trask was calling for massive civil disobedience. And it was just that coincidentally that, um, that the observatory came up on, on the, the Board of Trustees you know, docket, their agenda for a trustee meeting. Um, I'm sorry, not the trustees, Board of Regents for the university. And there was a huge protest at the university. The, the, the state overacted, or you know, they overreacted. They called out SWAT team and um, Kalekoa Kael, who was also arrested at, on the TMT protest on Mauna Kea. They arrested him at, um, at, you know, at the Board of Regents meeting. And, um, and you know, I, just, I just think about the, the ways in which the university keeps on pushing these, these things through. And I understand the appeal of these sorts of projects. You know, there is a, a lot of money. To it. There's, a, there's a lot of money at stake. Um, and I think probably you know, there hasn't actually been as much money previously. I think TMT is sort of unique in that there's actually cash that's being offered to the state of Hawaii and to the university to move forward with TMT. So let's, let's not get too far off into the, yeah. the economic, um, but let's stay with, with the political. So, um, or the, the legal actually. So right now where we are, we have um, uh, the hearing officer, uh, Amano has, set, has recommended that the um, conditional use permit or CDUP, mm -hmm. I forget what it stands for, but. Conservation district use permit. Conservation district use permit um, has recommended that they move forward with that. So what's, what's the next step? So my understanding, and I should say I'm not an attorney, um, there, are, there are real attorneys on the <laughs> KL board. I am not one of them. Um, so I'm not even sure that CDP actually stands for Conservation District Use Permit, but I think it does. I think it sounds does. right to me. <laughs> if it doesn't, it should. Uh, but, there we go. Right. But my understanding is that the next step is that on September 20th, um, the, board of the Land and, board of Land and Natural Resources will have a hearing in Hilo to, um, I guess, to weigh and, and either go with Judge Amano's decision or, or to not. So the board itself could decide not to. They absolutely could. Okay. Yeah. Um, and your recommendation as con for concerned citizens to get involved is is uh, to get their voices heard. Is is what? Is there any place to particularly address um, this? I would say two things actually. Um, I'm a big believer in, in the importance of, of conversation, of people staying, into, and staying in communication. And one of the, the deleterious effects of things like Facebook is that we tend to live in our own bubbles, yeah. which is why I don't really go to Facebook anymore. But I, I, I think it's very valuable to stay engaged with people who think differently than you. So I would encourage people who currently s support the TMT to talk to people that oppose it and vice versa. Um, so that, that's one thing that I think we should always be doing as you know, citizens in a democratic society. But um, in terms of this particular, this particular issue, uh, I would recommend that, that people contact the governor's office. 
And I know that it's not technically on his desk. You know, it's not sitting on his desk today, though it very well may be. Uh, oh, 300 pages of it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of fun. But, you know, sort of uh, in terms of the procedure, right, it is in the jurisdiction of the Board of Land and Natural Resources. So it makes sense to call Suzanne Case, who is the chair of the board. Um, but at the end of the day, the BLNR is appointed by the governor. And we live in a state where uh, the governor has a lot of power. The governor appoints the Department of Education, the, the Board of sure. Education, appoints yeah. the Board of Land and Natural Resources, appoints, appoints the Board of Regents of the University. So ultimately, it feeds back to the governor. And, okay. Yeah. So that's, um, before we go to a break, make a note, write or call Suzanne Case at Department of Land and Natural Resources and Governor Ige and let him know. And we'll be right back. You may say. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. Today, Ikaika Hasi is in the Think Tech studio with me to talk about um, the new decision by Riki Mayamano in the contested case hearing about the Mauna Kea TMT. So um, Ikaika had just um, suggested that if we feel strongly about it one way or another, um, we should let uh, Governor Ige know that. And he would be my first phone call. And I want to rem remember, remind our readers and our this, <laughs> we call viewers, viewers, listeners, listeners that viewers. it's not the Mauna Kea TMT, at least not yet. It is the TMT. And the TMT doesn't have to be on Mauna Kea, right? right? I mean, that's something to remember is that I think there's a reasonable argument to be made that the TMT is good for humanity, that it's good for scientific advancement of all people. That doesn't mean that it has to be on Mauna Kea. And there's, apparently there's a secondary site an alternative site that actually wants the TMT, that doesn't have the sort of um, cleavages and divisions within its own community um, that we have here. You know, we clearly are not um, in agreement about the TMT being located on Mauna Kea. Um, so I just want to you know, yeah. make sure that we remember that, bracket so that off. That's a really good way of holding it. So it's not like it's, it's inherently bad or anything like that. I mean, that kind of science has a place, but no, it doesn't... It's just it against just our doesn't. laws. <laughs> That's all. And the, the relationship between the Hawaiian community and the environmental community, because it really goes beyond the Hawaiian community. I know plenty of people who aren't Hawaiians who don't like what's happened up on, on Mauna Kea. Right. Yeah, environmentally, it's, it's just irresponsible. And conversely, there are many Hawaiians who support absolutely. the TMT and Mauna Kea. Right? A absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of the greatest uh, uh, discussions uh, online has been in the notes um, of the video of the show I did with Euclid Aluli about that and um, actually some sharing of information. So as you said about the discussion, um, it will be interesting to see what this one uh, generates too because it is important to listen as, as, as painful as it may be it's critical that we listen to the voices that say, oh, well, we need this. Yeah, 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 right. We have to be, we have to, right, we have to do a better job of listening. Uh, and I think we need to recognize that Hawaii is an island, but that doesn't mean that we're alone. You know, we exist as part of a global society. And within that society, there might be other places which are better suited for the TMT. And just because there are some people here who believe that it is to their advantage or even to our advantage to have it here, that still does not mean that it should be here. There is clearly a, a strong segment of our community, uh, which I strongly identify with, 
that doesn't want it. And there are laws which say that we shouldn't be putting it on Mamakea. So I think part of the, the thing that isn't always um, front and center on this is, is uh, uh, but you brought it up first, is this long since the first observatory was built up there in, in 1968. Just over the decades that, that this, this disregard for the laws has just been painful. It's like at some point you go, uh, why should we believe it's going to be any different this time? What has changed? Yeah, I mean, I want to call one of my attorney friends right now, but I believe that, <laughs> that the intention was for there to be one telescope on Mauna Kea. We now have 13, and if the TMT moves forward, it would be 14 telescopes on Mauna Kea. And some of them are, are supposed to have been dismantled and removed, right. and those promises, uh, those agreements were not kept. Right? I want to say agreements because they were agreements. So one of the interesting things for me reading, I did not read the 300 pages. Probably you haven't had enough time to do that too. I read I a few. <laughs> well, I skipped right to page 260. Oh yeah, my favorite page. <laughs> where the decision started and then the, the 40 conditions mm -hmm. that um, if um, must be met if the project is allowed to go forward. And as I was reading these 40 conditions, I thought, wow, how do we get these conditions met without building TMT? Because most of them are, 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 are about things that should have been done. Right. I believe earlier up in there, number one or two was, we need to follow the laws. You yes. Know, follow the yes. Great idea. <laughs> Love that idea. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> yeah, follow the laws. Yes. Why not? <laughs> For a change. Um, and then there were some interesting ones, like um, uh, number 10, which says providing a million dollars annually adjusted for inflation for community benefits package, which will commence with the construction and continue through the term of the sublease. The package will be administered via the Hawaii Island New Knowledge Fund Board of Advisors. Do you know anything about that? I hadn't ever heard of it. I oppose new knowledge. I don't know what they're talking about. I'm joking. <laughs> I no, no. So I believe that that is, is something that the, um, that the TMT Corporation has offered, that they will pay a $1 million community benefits package, which, depending on, on how you think about the economics, is either generous or... Or, or, or not really. Yeah, sort of yeah. pithy. We've all seen bid budgets that are for a million dollars, and when it really comes down to who gets paid what, um, it right. doesn't actually stay. I mean, our here. Hawaii has a GDP of seventy-eight billion dollars. That's how big our economy is: seventy-eight billion dollars. So one million dollars a year is really a very small amount, and and I appreciate um, you know just thinking about the island of, of Hawaii. You know, it's an island that, in many ways, is suffering from um, some, from sort of an economic depression. You know, it doesn't have enough doctors to to take care of Medicare patients. You know, there's there's a lot of systemic problems on on the Big Island. Um, the one million dollars can go far in some you know in, in some aspects and in, in some ways, uh, but it's not enough, and it also shouldn't be. Uh, I think it would be incorrect for us to. Uh, to regard it as sort of a, um, a savior, as a... Um, oh, gosh. That would yeah. be hard. No, I, and I didn't mean it that way. No, I no, was I, I just, uh, Yeah, and then the, the thing about the jobs always comes up. And um, you know, I, I acknowledge that they're critically needed in that community, good jobs. But um, we don't have any way at this point when it, they say we will hire locally. <clears throat> what does that mean, actually? Who, who's a local? Okay, that's a good question right there. <laughs> so all those, those um, uh, jobs, it sounds like it's great that they're coming to Hawaii, but, but they may not. So I, I, I just felt like th this list, there was so many possible really good things, yeah. um, but the devil's in the details. And is, is there any sense of how do we get more accountability? I would say that I, I worry when when things come across our collective agenda, you know, rail, um, you know, I, I don't know, a new college campus, a telescope, and the, ben as, and the benefits 
start to include things which are really secondary, tertiary to the project itself. If we are going to do this, we should do it for the scientific advancement that it affords you know, us, our people. Um, but we shouldn't be doing it as a jobs project. That's the wrong reason to do this, this particular thing, particularly given all of the opposition to it from our community. OK, so in the remaining two minutes, that's just enough time. <laughs> can, you, can you paint a picture of what you would like to see happen at this point? Is there, or, or would you rather make prognosticate? <laughs> <laughs> What's ever more fun for you, Ikaika? Well, I think to prognosticate on a, you know, on a best fit curve, you know, looking at how things have gone yeah. in, our, in our town um, would probably be a bummer for most of the people who love the mountain and, and want to see it not have the TMT. Just the way that politics usually happens is, in, is not good. Uh, but, you know, I do believe that Governor Ige is an honorable man, and I think that he has the potential to be a courageous man. And uh, with that said, I, I think that he could very well say, you know, my people are divided, and we're not going to move forward. There are better places on this planet for this telescope. There's places where they want this telescope, and we should let them have it. And by the way, um, the state of Hawaii is also going to make good on all the agreements it's made over the last 40 years. That's number on 41 Nauticaid. on this list. Yes. <laughs> and we don't have to build, we don't have to build it to, to, to have those promises be kept. Right. All right. Thanks so much, Hikaika, for coming to Think Tech and spending a little time. I hope it's not the last time I see you. I'm sure it won't. <laughs>